Hi, welcome to this video lecture. This will be our last in this part of machine learning using Python and Scikit-learn. We're going to finish this off by talking about elastic net regression. There will be a later module, module 9, which will go into uh, more advanced machine learning models. So we're trying to cover the simpler ones now, and then later on in the course we'll talk about those others. So this might be getting a little bit repetitive with all the different regularization methods. Elastic net is another one of these. Um, but I wanted to cover this one just so we've just for thoroughness here. So the elastic net regression algorithm is a lot like lasso and a lot like ridge regression. In fact, it is a combination of those two things. So our objective function looks like this. Uh, we still have the sum of squared error in there like we have for ordinary least squares and all these methods have this term in there. That's the term that we are uh, trying to use to align our model, which is down here, with the measured data. So like in lasso regression, we also, uh, elastic net lets us penalize having extra features in the model. So this tends to drive the optimization toward a simpler model. So in uh, lasso regression, we use the L1 norm and we're trying to uh, minimize this. It's the, the L1 norm is the sum of the absolute value of all of our model parameters. So this term is going to have the effect of trying to minimize each individual term if that term is not significantly, uh, not statistically significant when it comes to minimizing our sum of squared error. Um, finally, we have this other term. So here, just like in ridge regression, now we have this other, this L2 norm, and the L2 norm is the sum of each of the model parameters squared. So each of these, these are both penalty terms. One is an L1 penalty term, the other is an L2 penalty term. And then we're going to balance these out in our collective objective function using these tuning parameters. Do you notice this alpha term shows up in both of these? It's the same number in both places. So that alpha term is still just a tuning parameter to adjust the weighting. So with alpha, you're adjusting the collective regularization weighting. So you're going to be a higher alpha means you're going to have a bigger L1 penalty and a bigger L2 penalty. Then because we have these two different uh, regularization penalties to balance, we need another parameter here, another tuning parameter. So this L1 ratio is another parameter that tells the objective function about the relative importance uh, of the L1 norm or the L2 norm. So if you have an L1 ratio of 1, that means you're going to have only an L1 norm penalty in your objective function. So when the L1 ratio is 1, that means this term is going to go away. So you will not have this L2 norm. So when that's the case, this reduces to being just the same as lasso regression. In the other extreme, when L1 is 0, now the L1 term goes away and this L2 penalty uh, is becomes the only significant penalty and this is just like ridge regression. But anywhere between 0 and 1 uh, and you're having this, you're uh, be able to weight these different penalty terms accordingly. So this just gives you a little bit more flexibility, hence the name elastic net regression. You can, you can shuffle between uh, ridge regression and lasso depending on the value of that L1 ratio. So we're going to go through this. Uh, I'll go through this much more quickly this time. The code looks very, very similar to the other methods. Here we are importing the elastic net regression tool. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, import it. We still need to import our data. And if you're following along, again, there's a link in the video description. Uh, there's a link to download this data if you want to follow along very closely. I'm going to skip the plotting because we've done that a bunch of times already. And we're just going to do our pre-processing. Same combination of variables. These basically the same features that we've used in the other models. And now we're doing the testing and training data, splitting that so that 20% of our data is testing and the other 80% is for training. And then here we need to make this change where our fitting term is this, or our fitting function is elastic net. And here we define these two parameters. So I'm using an alpha of 0 0.2. Again, if I wanted my model to be even simpler, the idea is I would ratchet alpha up higher and that would drive my model parameters down. 
at the cost of having my uh, sum of squared error be higher and my r squared value be lower. And then here I hit my other tuning parameter shows up here. So just by default, L1 is 0 0.5 and we're just gonna stick with that. So if you're wanting to get a, a really perfect machine learning model, um, this is both an art and a science. So the, the science is there, you've seen the optimization, you've seen the math, but then it's really uh, trying to figure out uh, this balance between model accuracy and uh, model simplicity. And so you might play around with both of these tuning parameters. So right now we're going to equally weight the L1 norm penalty term and the L2 norm penalty term. So this is going to be halfway between ridge regression and the lasso algorithm. So I'll go ahead and run this guy. Um, we will run our model. So here we're getting um, a relative error and our R squared on our training data and testing data. Let's go ahead and generate the parity plot. So again, just like the others, we're producing a model that is similar to the others. We can look at our feature importance by just plotting those coefficients and you can see the elastic net model is telling us that x1 is important. So a model that varies linearly with input x1 is probably something we should feature in our final model. X3 is also important, so this linear term relative to X3 is important. And then we're finding that X2 squared is important, and then X2 times X3 is also important. And these others, we may want to omit those. But just like in other, um, in other cases, when the elastic net lets you uh, just use these tuning parameters, so you could use an L1 ratio of zero, and this becomes rig ridge regression, you can use an L1 ratio of one, and this becomes um, la the lasso algorithm. And then you can use an alpha of zero, and this just becomes ordinary least squares. So again, what I recommend is once you've identified these features that are not important, and by looking at a graph like this that gives us feature importance, we could omit perhaps x2, x1 squared, x1 times x2, and x1 times x3, and maybe even x3 squared. So I would recommend omitting those. Going back to uh, here, where you're defining which set of inputs goes into your model. Here you could go and just delete those columns entirely and um, delete the columns entirely for the features that you want to omit from your model. And then I'd recommend running uh, ordinary least squares again, so then you can get the right fitting parameters that does truly minimize your sum of squared error. So we can run these commands too, again to extract our model if we wanted to look at the numerical values. If you're going to be using this model, publishing it in a report or something, you'd want to go get the numerical values out of here so that you could share this model with others who might want to uh, use it.